Coming up on OU Nightly, live Super Tuesday updates before the results roll in. Plus, OU's Gaylord College looks for a new dean, what the first candidate says he has to offer. And wildfires still spreading in the state and beyond, how Oklahomans are lending a hand. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Emily Faith. And I'm Noah Mack. Today is Super Tuesday and you still have time to vote. Polls don't close until 7 p.m. That's right. We will also have live election coverage starting tonight at 7. But for now, let's go to OU Nightly's Ireland Fitzer, who is live at University Lutheran with local voters. Ireland? Yes, I'm at one of the polling places, University Lutheran on Elm Street, where I was able to talk to a couple of people about the importance of coming out and casting your vote today. Well, if you don't come out and vote, then whatever happens, you don't really have an excuse to say, I don't agree with this because this is your opportunity to say what you want to say at the right proper time. You have a voice and you need to use it and they give us a small piece of freedom and we need to take it. One thing that they both emphasized was to make sure to get out and to vote. Tonight, the polls close at 7 p.m. Reporting in Norman, Ireland Fitzer, OU Nightly. Thanks, Ireland. And as voters head to the polls, Gaylord College works to choose its next dean. Today, the first candidate of five met with college staff, students, and faculty. OU Nightly Stone Weber joins us live in the newsroom with details. Stone. Emily, Gaylord College's first candidate for dean is no stranger. It's current journalism professor Mike Betcher. Betcher, one of the first correspondents for CNN, was a reporter for NBC and ABC as well. He's been teaching at Gaylord since 2009. Now, Gaylord is searching for a leader after Dean Ed Kelly retired last year. In a letter to the college, Kelly wrote, it's important the program is represented by someone who's younger, who can come in with new ideas and fresh perspective. Betcher addressed that statement as well as the fact that he does not hold a bachelor's degree. I'm 69 years old. I'm a male and I'm white. And it may be time now for a younger generation. I am a leader. You don't become a leader with a degree or an advanced degree. If you're going to become a leader, it's something that develops over time. Obviously, not having a college degree has not prevented Betcher from being a professor at this college or successful network journalist but it's no secret all other final candidates for the position hold a PhD. We will be following their visits to Gaylord College too and bring you details as they visit over the coming weeks. In the newsroom here at Gaylord College, Stone Weber, OU Nightly. Thanks, Stone. Wildfires continue to burn across western Oklahoma and the Texas Panhandle tonight, and resources are stretched thin in both states. OU Nightly's Kaylee Fan is live at an Oklahoma forestry office with the latest on the fire fight. Noah, Noah, it's just offices like this here in Goldsby. There are many of them across the state of Oklahoma. Forestry officers are saying that it's been a very long week of fighting and they are still trying to contain some of those wildfires. Wildfires have spread across the United States for a little over a week. And as of March 4th, almost 400,000 acres have been burned from active fires, according to the National Interagency Fire Center, a number that Oklahoma largely contributes to. We've had um, more than 150,000 acres in Oklahoma burned, and that's pretty significant. Keith Merckx, the Oklahoma Forestry Services Information Representative, says progress has been made in containing these fires due to the break in weather but a lot still needs to be done. Most of the fires are fully contained. We still have the Catesby fire that we're working on. It's um, still a pretty large fire, almost 91,000 acres. I think we were working on getting 60% containment on that one. He says that fire crews from out of state have come to Oklahoma's aid during this time of need. At the moment, we have crews either in Oklahoma or on the way to Oklahoma from North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, 
Kentucky, and Tennessee. And if that need ever arises elsewhere, Merck says Oklahoma will gladly return the favor. We often find that our fire crews head off to fires in Montana or Alaska. Even now, as both Oklahoma and Texas are battling their own respective fires. We work constantly very close with Texas. We're in touch almost on a daily basis. Even right now, if they asked, we would send personnel. As the season continues, he says that the OFS tells people to continue to exercise caution. It comes back to the common sense. If we take the steps to prevent wildfire, then that goes a long way toward preventing wildfire. Until things start to green up here later this spring and we get some significant rainfall, Oklahoma Forestry cautions everyone to just be a little more careful as it just takes a small spark to start a large wildfire. Wildfire, excuse me. Reporting live from Goldsby, Kaylee Fan, OU Nightly. Thanks, Kaylee. And luckily, it looks like the state will be getting some rain later this week to help with those dry conditions. That's right. Well, let's get right over to OU Nightly meteorologist Sam Patterson for a first look at the forecast. Yeah, we got some good news in terms of fire weather. You can see right now humidity is still pretty low, especially in that Texas and Oklahoma panhandle. But we have some rain coming up later this week. You can see temperatures are starting to cool down out there as well, which can help contain some of these fires. But like I said, coming up, we do have allergies sticking around as well as that fire weather. Then we have some storms later this weekend, and we are going to cool down into this weekend. We'll take a look at all that and more coming up in just a little bit. Thank you, Sam. A ceasefire deal between Israel and Hamas has failed after days of nego negotiations. Brooke Griggs has that and the rest of today's national and international headlines from the News Center. Hamas has rejected a ceasefire agreement from the U.S., Qatar, and Egypt, which requires them to release hostages for a six-week ceasefire. Hamas says that they will only release hostages if the ceasefire is permanent and Israel completely withdraws from Gaza. A Hamas senior leader is accusing Israel of stalling on an agreement. Back in the U.S., the Department of Education has fined Liberty University a record $14 million for violating the Clary Act. The Clary Act requires colleges who receive federal funding to record and report crimes that happen on campus. In 2021, 12 women sued the private Christian school, claiming the university created an environment for increased sexual assault and rape. As the 2024 election approaches, Senator Kirsten Sinema, an independent from Arizona, has announced she will not run for re-election. Right now, Democrats, plus the independents aligned with them, have thin 51 to 49 majority. With Sinema's retirement, her seat could flip control in the Senate. She was the first Democrat to win a Senate seat in Arizona in 30 years. More on the Senate, New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez and his wife have been charged with obstruction of justice and conspiracy in a new 18 count indictment. The two are already facing bribery charges, accused of accepting money for his political influence. Emily, Noah, back to you. Thanks, Brooke. Well, coming up, you could have a new furry friend soon. How a gentle giant could make you smile up next. And a new rule brings changes to late fees on credit cards. See why the Biden administration plans to challenge it after this. A senior dog is in foster care waiting for a possum adopter to give him a forever home. OU Nightly's Abigail Franklin has more in this week's Pet of the Week. This week we have a gentle giant in foster care looking for his forever home. But please step slowly as this kind gentleman just needs a quick second to warm up. This is Manny, the sweetest Great Dane you have ever met. He's been out in foster for several months while he gets kind of used to things. He's a little bit scared right now because he's used to being out in a home. Um, but he'll open up and he's just a, just a super sweet guy. Come here, buddy. I think he's afraid of your tripod. While my tripod was not his friend, he is very people loving and cannot wait to snuggle up with his new owners. Manny loves people and loves cuddling. Uh, so he just wants to be safe with someone. So as long as he can be around his people and walk around with them and cuddle up with them, uh, that's going to be kind of his idea of heaven. His traits don't end here as his foster parents have helped him gain some confidence. He's leash trained walks really well on the leash, 
Um, and he loves children, so being around kids. In fact, if he's having trouble trusting an adult, if a kid is around and the kid is comfortable around the adult, then he will extend kind of that, um, that calmness. Don't let Manny size fool you as he's the perfect cuddle buddy. And while it may take some time for him to warm up to you, he's hoping that your home is his new home. Reporting for OU Nightly, Abigail Franklin. Manny is available today and can't wait to meet his new family. You can reach out to Norman Animal Welfare with any of the options on your screen to adopt our pet of the week. It's never too late to help a pet in need. Well, changes to credit card payments and late fees start today. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau finalized regulation that caps most credit card late charges at $8. It's down $220 of yearly saving savings every year. However, the chief policy officer at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce says the new rule wrongly punishes people who pay their bills on time. The chamber announced they will soon file a lawsuit against the Protection Bureau. Coming up, two Oklahoma colleges are teaming up to battle the statewide teacher shortage. Find out how you can get involved with the new program after the break. And severe weather is in the forecast. We'll time that out for you coming up. It has been a pretty pleasant day for us here in Norman. A little bit cooler than we have seen in recent days, but still not too bad. 64 right now feels like 64. Dew point and humidity a little bit low. Visibility nice. A little chilly with the north wind. And of course the dry air are keeping those allergies in place. Trees at a high level, mold at low right now. And unfortunately, until we get to the later half of this week, these allergies are going to stick around just because we are so dry. So looking at your Wednesday, going to start off in the low mid 40s, warm up through the day about 70 by 6 p.m. It's going to be a pretty nice set of days coming up. Now, the only issue with that is it it's, it's felt like spring, which means we're going to have some severe weather. You can see rain chances as we move throughout the week. Thursday, 60%. Friday, 40%. Thursday is when we're really going to have the severe risk. So let's go ahead and time that out for you. You can see Wednesday night storms start to develop along the Red River and they continue to move in from the south up into Norman across the entire state. Now, the only issue we are seeing with this right now is we have a lot of cloud coverage starting off early in the day. If these clouds stick around, they could keep energy from forming, which means our severe threat might drop a little bit. So we will continue to monitor that as these new models drop. You can see through 5 p.m. though, showers continue across the state. Clouds stick around for your Friday morning and Friday afternoon. Some showers further out toward the west in the panhandle as well. Still warming up pretty nicely here in Norman. Those clouds are going to stick around through for us through Saturday. So let's take a look at the severe weather outlook. You can see Texas Panhandle all the way from the southern border up into the Red River is a slight risk here in Norman, though. We are in a marginal risk, which includes the majority of the state of Oklahoma. But again, this is really going to be dependent upon whether or not those clouds break and we can get sunshine and warmth starting to fire those storms up. So again, highs Wednesday. First, before we get to all that severe weather, going to be a pretty nice Wednesday for you. Temperatures near that 70 degree mark. Next seven days, again, 70. This is where we're going to have to take a big precaution just because we are trying to figure out how much our energy we're going to develop for that Thursday. Friday rain chances stick around for us and then going to cool down quite a bit as we enter early next week. Yeah, well, I'm I'm honestly looking forward to the rain. I, I feel like it's been pretty dry lately. I know. I'm looking forward to it as well. But with those severe storm precautions, what are some things that maybe students need to keep in mind in case we do see that sun break through and storms develop? Absolutely. You just need to keep a listen out for any sirens, any warnings that get issued. Uh, if you have a car on campus, you might want to throw it in the parking garage on Thursday just because we have a chance for large hail. Well, I'll definitely be sure to park my car in a garage. <laughs> well, the Oklahoma City Community College and the Janine Rainbow College of Education at the University of Oklahoma have finalized a partnership that helps transfer students become teachers after graduation. With the help from the Inspire to Teach Scholarship, the Teach Grant and Bridged Academic Advising, the new teacher bound program battles the current statewide teacher shortage and and pushes transfer students to graduate with a four year degree and become a teacher. Of a lot of students, especially in early childhood, 
the early childhood program at OCCC is they get their associate's degree and then work in childcare, which is fantastic. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. We need a lot of people working in childcare, but I hope this encourages some of them to go ahead and pursue the four-year degree and finish and become a public school teacher. Because the program is currently being offered to students who are pursuing a degree in pre-education. Now, one Sooner squad is heating up both on and off the court. This team is counting up both wins and honors. OU Knightley's Kaylee Jo Hommel has it all in sports. And who said football was just for the fall? Mark your calendars. I'll have all the details on the Sooner spring game coming up in sports. Hello, I'm Kaylee Jo Hommel, and it's time for sports. There's only 46 days until the debut of Team 130 in the Crimson and Cream on Owen Field. The spring game now has an official start time. The red and white game kicks off at 1 p.m. on March 20th. Jackson Arnold leads the Sooners into spring practice starting March 11th. And Oklahoma's annual Pro Day is set for March 12th. After taking back-to-back -back Big 12 regular season titles, OU women's basketball keeps racking up the hardware. Announced today, senior Skylar Van took home conference co-player of the year. Leading lady Jenny Baranchek was named Big 12 Coach of the Year. And as for the league's newcomer of the year, Peyton Verhol scored the honor. The Lloyd Noble Center is getting feral tonight as the Cincinnati Bearcats pounce into Norman. The last home game of the regular season marks senior night, honoring Latre to third, Sam Godwin, and Max Kleinscheck. After the Houston heartbreak, the Sooners are ready to hit the hardwood again. I mean, we play, we're playing the best of the best. I mean, tell me anybody who's in a five-game stretch like we just played. You know, four top 12 teams and your rival on the road in an unbelievable atmosphere. For us, we're coming out of that stretch. We know we got to turn right around and play Cincinnati. Um, we've got to, we've got to, I want to play again right now. I mean, the guys do too. They're crying. Gasso's Golden Gates open back up tomorrow with the goal of a Sooner snapback for OU softball. Number one Oklahoma fell in their last game at Loves against the Raging Cajuns, ending their NCAA record winning streak at 71 games. The action returns at 6 p.m. Wednesday with Texas A&M Commerce on the visitors side. The midweek matchups in Norman do not end there. After their luck ran out in Vegas, OU baseball is back to face Wichita State. The Sooners lead the all-time series over the Shockers 20-16. First pitch is at 6.30 p.m. tonight at El Del Mitchell Park. The Thunder look to blaze a trail past Portland tomorrow as their road trip storms into the Rose City. The potential for the number one seed hangs on the line after Oklahoma City's loss to the Lakers Monday night. Shea Gilgis Alexander posted 20 points, dropping his streak of eight straight 30 point games. Emily, Noah. Thank you, Kaylee Joe. Still to come, March Madness is right around the corner. That's right, and one fast food chain is offering a deal to basketball fans across the country. We'll tell you the details up next. Berg, with an update on the Oklahoma wildfires, Oklahoma Forestry Services says 19 homes have been burned. Seven of those were empty. Four people have been taken to the hospital and one of them a volunteer firefighter. At this time, the Oklahoma wildfires have not met the standard for a FEMA major disaster declaration. There's assistance available through the Red Cross, Oklahoma Baptist Disaster Relief and Oklahoma Cattlemen's Foundation. Noah, Emily. Thanks, Allison. March Madness is upon us, and Wendy's is kicking things off with $1 cheeseburgers. The fast food giant announced that through their mobile app, customers can order a Dave's single or double cheeseburger for just a dollar. The deal will run from now until April 10th, and you can only use it once. And it's making me hungry. It's like, I want to go get food after this. <laughs> I know, I feel that. I might have to make a stop at Wendy's, get a $1 burger. Yeah. Well, let's do one last look at the weather. OU Nightly meteorologist Sam Patterson has more for us. Well, weather's got a bit of March Madness itself. You can see, like we have been mentioning, severe weather is on the horizon. Your campus weather authority is tracking the system that will come in on Thursday. Slight risk southeastern Oklahoma, excuse me, southwestern Oklahoma here in Norman, though, just a marginal risk. Pretty nice for your Wednesday. And then as we move throughout the week after that system moves through, we are going to cool down quite a bit. 
Well, thank you so much, Sam, and thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Emily Faith. And I'm Noah Mack. Be sure to watch OU Nightly live on weekdays at 4.30. Good night.